Hi, my name is Andy Duchesne. I'm a senior policy analyst with Reaching Home. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the research project that we've recently completed. This will give you some insight into shelter use trends at the national level. We've also done some sub-analyses so that we can tell you a little bit about the populations of interest. I will also introduce a new project that we are really excited about, and maybe we can get some feedback from you guys. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the newest installation of the National Shelter Study. Some of you are already familiar, but for those of you who are not, this is an annual estimate of the number of emergency shelter users in Canada and their demographic characteristics. The study spans more than a decade. The most recent data updates the results to 2018. About half of the emergency shelters in Canada are included, but because we have access to most of the larger shelters, over 70% of emergency beds in the country are included in our data set. It should be noted that domestic violence shelters, temporary shelters, and transitional housing are not included in the city. For those of you who are interested in more uh, of a deep dive into the methodology, I suggest uh, having a look at some of our previous reports, including the 2005 to 2016 National Shelter Study, which has a really um, um, in-depth methodology section. In 2018, there were an estimated 123,000 people who experienced homelessness at an emergency shelter. You can see that the number of shelter users has dropped over time, which is what we like to see. Uh, however, demand is still high. Uh, the average nightly occupancy among all shelters in 2018 was 95%, translating to approximately 15,000 people per night. General shelters are operating at around 95% occupancy, and you can see uh, they're represented by the blue line. Family shelters are operating at 99% occupancy. To give you an idea, the closer we get to 100%, the less the shelter system is able to keep up with demand. If 100% is surpassed, the shelter system is overloaded. So how can the number of people be dropping and the demand increasing? people are simply staying longer in shelters. Most shelter users are between the ages of 25 and 49, and the average age of shelter users is around 40. As you can see, the age distribution has not changed very much over the course of the study, with the exception of older adults who saw a steady increase between 2005 and 2012, but it has since stabilized. Most shelter users are male, and this should come as no surprise since approximately 60 to 70% of emergency shelter beds are for men and 30 to 40% are for women. This has not changed considerably between 2005 and 2018. The proportion of male shelter users tends to increase with age, however. So you can see the age group is not broken down by other genders due to the small sample size. But it should be noted that while transgender is an option that people can choose, the male and female responses may also include people who would identify as trans men or trans women. Indigenous people continue to be overrepresented in shelters in 2018. While about 5% of Canadians are Indigenous according to the census, approximately 33% of shelter users are Indigenous. You can see that there seems to be a slight increase between 2014 and 2018 from about 31 to 33 percent, but this increase is not statistically significant, so we can't say that there has been a real uh, rise in Indigenous homelessness over this time. Veterans make up less than 2 percent of shelter users. Um, this is down slightly from uh, uh, when we first started measuring in 2014. However, it's not significantly different in recent years. Veterans are older on average, about 10 years older than the rest of shelter users. They're also most, more likely to be male. Um, all shelter users are more likely to be male, but this uh, difference is particularly pronounced among the veterans um, as is uh, described by this graph here. We also did a breakdown of shelter use by citizenship status, which was also first collected in 2014. In 2018, about 8% of shelter users were not Canadian citizens. Uh, 
Um, compared to 2014, the number of permanent residents or immigrants has decreased, while the number of refugees and refugee claimants has increased uh, significantly. Scale is very important here. You can see that non-citizens make up a very small percentage of the overall population, as is demonstrated by the graph on the left. When you remove this Canadian citizen group, you can see more clearly the differences in years uh, among non-citizens. The uh, increase in refugee and refugee claimants may be the result of changes in policy south of the border. Because the U.S. began to close its borders to refugees back in 2016, Canada may have received some overflow. International conflicts, including the war in Syria, likely also contributed. Also of note is that in the news at the time, the Greater Toronto Area noted a significant increase in refugee claimants. Uh, this was also noted in the Toronto point in time count. So uh, we're not just seeing this trend at the national level. In summary, the number of shelter users is decreasing. The occupancy rate in general and family shelters remains very high uh, because people are staying longer. The majority of shelter users are male. Indigenous people continue to be overrepresented. And the number of refugee and refugee claimants rose between 2014 and 2018, although they still make up a fairly small portion of the overall shelter population. I now want to take a little bit of time to introduce a new project that we're really excited about. ESDC's National Shelter Study Annual Estimate of Homelessness includes only the total number of individuals using shelters in Canada. Uh, it excludes several key locations that we would consider uh, through the reaching home definition as homeless as well. So why are we missing these remaining locations? Uh, we've been working mostly with HIFAS data and this is limited to, to emergency shelters and only a small portion of seasonal and temporary shelters and transitional housing sites. What we have is only part of the overall picture. In order to fill in the blanks, we'll need to seek additional information from Alpha. This new enumeration project seeks to do this for existing national data. We plan to develop a methodology for estimating the annual hidden homelessness and homelessness outside of shelters in collaboration with a group of expert stakeholders. We're very ambitious, so we're planning on having an initial estimate this year. We also have a longer term goal to improve it over time with newer and better sources of data. This is not gonna be something that we are going to solve straight away, but at least if we have an annual, initial annual estimate, we can build up from that. At this point, I would like to pose a few questions to the group um, for reflection. So how will the community partners view a national estimate of homelessness that includes more contexts? Will attention paid to a national estimate help to raise awareness at the local level? And are there good sources of data on hidden homelessness that we should consider for a project like this? So I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback about these things. And stay tuned, uh, we will definitely be presenting a lot of this new research projects and, and estimation strategies, etc. over time. So uh, keep checking our website and, um, and uh, our newsletters and all of that. If you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Here's my email address and around all the time. Uh, we also have previously published reports available for free online for you to read at this location. The most recent national shelter study is 2005-2016, which you can access here. Uh, and the 2005-2018 national shelter study is currently being written up uh, as we speak.